This is Export Like a Boss, the podcast for those on the front lines of international business and trade. Succeed in business on a global scale. The planet is your market. Here is your host, Alberto Rodriguez Baez. Welcome to a new episode of Export Like a Boss. First of all, I want to thank you all for your tweets, retweets, and emails. Your support and suggestions are tremendously appreciated. Today we will be talking about a very important aspect of dealing with potential foreign distributors, which is negotiating international distribution agreements. This is one of my favorite topics because a lot of my experience in international business consists of finding, screening, and selecting international distributors, including the negotiation of distribution agreements. As a matter of fact, this is something I get to speak about and train clients on often. What you will hear today is a keynote speech I gave at a NASBYTE conference. NASBYTE stands for National Association of Small Business International Trade Educators. And the website is nasbyte.org, N-A-S-B-I-T-E dot org. This presentation is titled The Bare Knuckles Guide to Negotiating with International Prospects. I included a link to this presentation's video in the episode's notes. You can find the episode's notes on our website, exportlikeaboss.com. Enjoy! Alright, I'm very excited to be here today to share with you some of the do's and don'ts, some of the tools and techniques I use throughout my career in international business development to successfully negotiate 200 plus international agreements. And now as a, consult- as a consultant, I use this information and this, uh, this counsel to help my clients that are going through these type of negotiations. And they really like it for two reasons. Number one, I call these techniques the, the negotiation techniques for people that don't like to negotiate and because they work. So, let's get moving. Are you ready to start? More coffee for everybody. All right, are you ready to start? All right, good stuff. American companies that establish commercial relationships with foreign companies have the potential to access these tremendous benefits. However, gaining these benefits depends on knowing how to negotiate agreements with foreign partners. And for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to focus on distribution relationships. So, it is critical that exporters know how to negotiate distribution agreements with foreign partners. And that these agreements benefit the exporter and keep the distributors motivated to produce results in the short and in the long term. So, before jumping into the do's and don'ts and the techniques and tools that I want to share with you, let's let's say something very important, and this is something that I want to mention right at the beginning. Negotiating with international prospects is a lot of fun. They have all kind of, they they have all kind of negotiating styles, uh, personalities and uh, agendas. So let me share with you four prospect personalities that I came up with just out of my, uh, from my experience negotiating with prospects from all over the world. So first we have the, the, one, the one that I call the straight shooter. This guy is the ideal prospect because he has a piece of no gimmick when he's negotiating. He is uh, very straightforward. He doesn't have hidden agendas, and he has a lot of questions to really figure out whether the opportunity of distributing 
to whatever product he's inquiring about, it's really a good opportunity for him. So in an ideal world, we will always negotiate with the stray shooter. However, we have the big shot. The big shot is the Donald Trump of international prospects. And from the beginning, he will tell you how, 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 many, how much resource, or how, how many resources he has, how many connections he has, that he is the best potential contact you can have in that country. Without him, probably you will not succeed there. And he is also very emotional. And probably will tell you that not going with him might be a mistake for you. So that's that's another another type of prospect. Next up, we have the yes man. Now, the yes man is almost the opposite to the big shot because the yes man is going to say pretty much yes to every requirement you mention. He's he is very compliant. You may say that's great. Not so much, beware, because this type of prospect, as soon as you start doing business with him, that sort of questions and arguments and all the issues arise. Finally, Mr. Smooth. This guy, or this prospect, is different than the yes man in that he will not say yes to everything that you propose or all the requirements that you bring up to the table, but he will kill you with kindness. He will shower you with compliments. He will be your best friend within the five minutes that you're talking with him. So there, different styles, different personalities. On top of that, they all, regardless of what type of prospect you're dealing with, and regardless of where they're from, they will ask up front, probably during the first meeting, for all this. They will ask you for everything. I tell my clients, they will ask you for one thing, everything. So they ask for all these. Hey, I want to wrap your product in my entire, not only country, not only region, in the continent. That happens, and I see some of you smiling, yes, and they ask for exclusive rights for all the product lines on a long-term deal with deep discounts right away and generous payment terms. So, how is an exporter going to handle this variety of personalities, negotiation styles, and demands? This begs another question. What is one of the most important parts in any negotiation? Let me show you. Preparation is critical to the success of any negotiation and very often is overlooked. So, the better prepared, and this I tell my clients all the time, the better prepared, the better the chances that you will succeed in negotiating an agreement that benefits you, the exporter, and keeps the distributor motivated to produce results in the short and the long term. So, let me, let me share with you three critical do's and don'ts exercises to prepare for negotiations. All right, let's start with the do's. The first one is define in advance three critical elements. Define this before the negotiations. And the first one is define the requirements. Requirements for what? Requirements to award these things that they have that the prospect is going to ask up front. So it's very important to start from the beginning defining all these, how are they going to acquire the exclusive rights for every of these elements. So because as I mentioned, they will, the prospects, they will ask for all these right away. And this is very common. On their side, there is no harm in asking, right? The harm is in us, or the exporter, giving all this away for nothing. So, these elements have 
to be earned. And something that I tell, something that I tell my clients is, these elements that you are going to give away are so important, so valuable, that you have to treat them like cash, as if they are cash. Because nobody gives cash away, right? Well, if you do, let me know, I don't wanna to talk to you. <laughs> but nobody gives cash away. You make the other party earn it. So you have to make the distributor earn these elements. And that's what is going to keep them motivated in the short and in the long term. So let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say that the prospect tells you, hey, I want the exclusive distribution rights for all, for the entire country or several countries. Stay always positive. Sure, no problem, buddy. Here are the requirements. You have to open a retail store or assign a sales rep to every city with a population of more than half a million. That is an example. They, let's say that they tell you, hey, I want also all the, the, the distribution rights for, exclusive distribution rights for all of your product lines, which happened to me when I was working for, for uh, uh, one of the companies that I used to work for. We had a lot of product lines. So they always said, I want to rep and be the exclusive distribu distributor of all your product lines. All right, assign a dedicated brand manager and let's put uh, goals of X amount of money or amount of dollars per, per product line and we are good to go. So, and just with the other distribution elements, it's important to put, to connect it to a requirement. These elements, treat them like as if they were cash. Don't give it, don't give it away. Remember, they have to be earned. All right, once you define those requirements, make sure you have a distribution agreement. I'm not gonna get into the, the details of the distribution agreement. That's, that could be a very lengthy discussion. But what I'm going to say is, you have to have a distribution agreement in place when you sign every distributor. Always have a distribution agreement in place for every distributor. And on top of the performance, clauses or performance measures that you include, include also what I call special clauses. And they take care of some interesting, common, and sometimes hairy issues. For example, I'm gonna tell you this scenario, and probably you're gonna recognize it. An exporter sets up a distributor, gives it the exclusive distribution rights, and the distributor doesn't place an order in six months, in one year, in two years. I heard it when I was in the private sector, I hear it with my clients. Oh, I have two or three distributors, they have not placed an order yet. One clause, one of the special clauses that I use all the time and work very well is what, one that I call the, the first order clause. What does it say? Basically, what it says is, if the distributor doesn't place the first order within 30, 60, or 90 days, you name it, the agreement is void. That gets the distributor cracking right away. It gets them to start producing results in the short term because they don't want to lose the hard fought distribution agreement that you want. And of course, you talk about, it, about this when you are doing the negotiation. All right, selection process. The selection process, it is very important. It's critical because it helps you to separate pretenders from contenders and to select the right distributors from the beginning. But also, it's a fantastic, excellent negotiation tool. And I'm gonna show you how, how that works during a negotiation. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So, here's the selection process that I use all the time. It's very straightforward. I'm not going to go into the selection process. If you want the full uh, explanation, let me know, contact me, I'll be happy to go over it. But what I'm gonna say is this. Right here, uh, in the second step, in the distributor prospectus, that's where you explain and include all the requirements that you previously defined. And down here, when you select your final pros uh, prospect to be your distributor is when you sign the agreement. And it is a, a, 
a trick of the trade. I always involve the US commercial service to, before signing the agreement, they will run an ICP, international company profile, to make sure that everything checked out. So, quick tip for you. But again, if you have any questions about this process, let me know. I have my, my clients that have used it, they really like it, it's very straightforward, and it works very well. All right, once you have set up these three requirements, make them part of your company policy. And you will see how, why this is so important in a couple of minutes when I give you a full example where we're going to use all the news and know. And finally, always keep calm and be assertive. This is something that I teach my clients and I make myself remember using this phrase, which is not mine by the way. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get rattled and get angry. Following that advice will keep you over the fray sometimes when things get heated and will always help you to keep the conversation in a positive light. So, those are the do's. Let's move on to the don'ts, shall we? Sure. All right, let's do. All right, the don'ts. These, these, the don'ts are, no, because our don'ts are not as important as the do's. As a matter of fact, they are as critical, and I call them defensive moves. Let me explain to you what are they. First, never give in to the prospects, demands, threats, charm, or promises. If you are dealing with a, with a big shot, do you remember the big shot? Sometimes he will tell you, I'll make sure that your company doesn't enter my country if you don't go with me. I heard stuff like that. Or if you're dealing with a Mr. Smooth, trust me, let's just do business without distribution agreement. Let's, you know, let's not put goals. I'll, I'll sell a lot. Don't, don't fall for that kind of stuff. Don't give in to the prospects, demands, threats, charm or promises. Number two, don't and please never fall in the first cover trap. And I usually ask exporters, how do you select the distributor in X country? Very often I hear, it was the first person that came and asked me for the distribution agreement. Or, it was the only person that from that country that expressed interest. And what I tell them is, giving you distribution rights away is not a first come, first serve type thing. You have to get every prospect through the selection process. And finally, this is very interesting. Never ever hurry or skip the selection process. Let me give you an example. And what, what I mean by never hurry or skip the selection process is that sometimes over the phone or face to face, a prospect is going to say, forget about the selection process, let's just sign today. I was in Germany at Cologne Mesa. Everybody had been in Cologne at Cologne Mesa? Awesome place to do business. And I was representing one of the companies I was working for. And I was at the booth, and suddenly a Mr. Smooth shows up. And he started just giving me all kind of compliments. I love your brand. I love your company. I would love to be your distributor. And oh my goodness, let's go for lunch. Let's go for a dinner. We did not go for lunch or dinner. But I mean, he was my best friend in like 10 minutes. So we were already changing pictures and everything now. But he was, he was very, very complimentary. Just typical Mr. Smooth. And he tells me, and you know what? I'm ready to invest heavily in your brand, to develop your brand in my country. And I said, okay, sounds good. But suddenly he said, but you know what? Earlier I was walking down the aisle and I met with your competitor. And guess what? He told me that, and you probably can guess, he was gonna give me the old exclusive rights to all the country, to all the product lines, in a long-term deal with great discounts, and 
very generous payment terms. If you match it right now, I'll sign the agreement with you right now. Right now. And I said, hey, thank you very much. I know you're very excited, but you know what? We have a selection process, and the first step is very easy. It's completing this information request form, and he turned into, from Mr. Smooth to the big shot. And he's like, he got abrasive. He's like, no, 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 why do why you want to do business with me? You don't trust me? Uh, do you, you are wasting my time. Why are you doing this to me? And he started getting fairly abrasive, and he started getting loud. And I tell him, you know what, okay, I, I suggest you, you know what, take take the other offer. You know, probably we're not gonna work well together, and probably I don't want to do business with you either. I didn't say that. But <laughs> but I told him, you know what, go and take the other deal. So he left in that enough. Later, I knew that my, my Peter, the other company, the computer company, we were acquaintances, and he was at all the other VP of international sales. So later through the day I went and I told him. Hey, do you have a guy that told you that I was gonna give him all these? He's like, yeah, how do you know? Because that's what they do. Some, some companies prey on exporters in trade shows where the atmosphere is very charged, there's music, people are pumping adrenaline. Some companies are under the gun to produce some sort of results. So they get some, deal, some deals like that. So never hurry or skip the selection process. That's a big deal. Sometimes happen over the phone uh, or face to face. But trade shows is where I've seen some very vivid examples that happened to me, like with that Mr. Smooth turning into the big shot. So we saw already some do's, we saw some don'ts. So now let's put it all together. Let's see how they all work together during a natural during an actual negotiation. So, let me show you how they work using two simple maneuvers. And I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. And here's the scenario. And I'm gonna start wrapping up with this, with this example that actually also is, is from my days in the private sector. But here's the scenario. What happens when you're talking on the phone or a trade show and the prospect says, sounds great, I want to be your distributor. Let's take the next, the next step. Why, why need, what do we need to do? So, let me show you a couple of maneuvers or techniques that I really like because they are negotiation techniques for people that don't like to negotiate. So, everybody can do them, I, did them. I use them all the time and they work very well. So, the prospect tells you, let's take it to the next level. Let's, let's move it forward. Let's take the next step. I want to be your distributor. I'm interested. What, do, what are we going to do? The first step is throwing what I call the jab. In boxing, the jab is a basic punch. It is, it, one of its main, main uses is to get a sense or to gauge the other person, what, how they react to a basic move, and set up your next, your next move too. So this is what you say, and I have, I have shown this move to several of my clients that were very nervous about doing negotiations, and they love it because it's really, they're very simple. You say something like this. I am very glad, Mr. Prospect, that you are interested in distributing, distributing our brand in X place. We have a selection process that will ensure that actually our companies are good for each other. So let me show you what is this process. You remember the process that we talked earlier? That's where, we, that's where things started clicking. Let me show you the process. The first step is completely simple form to know who you are. So, let me tell you the, the, the example. I was, uh, I, was I, I, I sent or started a, uh, a marketing campaign to get a distributor in a Middle Eastern country, and I had, I had just days earlier 
put some advertisement in uh, some trade magazines and some trade uh, websites into the US and commercial news USA. And I get this call. And this guy, they're alive. He, oh, I mean, he was very, very bombastic. Hey, this is this is your next distributor in X country. Take down the ads. I'm your man. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you? So I told him, okay, let's let's calm down. Let's take a breath. I didn't say that, but I say, hey, you know, what's your name? And you know, we started talking, and I told him. You know what? I, I went over exactly over this. Hey, I'm glad that you are excited about our brand and that you want to wrap our a beer distributor in X country in in uh, in the Middle East. But here, you know, we have a selection process that will help us assess whether we are a good match for each other. And it's very simple. The first step is, and I just went over the process. The guy. Okay, here are two things can happen that the prospect says yes, and you go on with the selection process, or that the prospect says no, which this guy said. No, I'm not gonna go through the selection process. I mean, he was somewhat of a big shot. I'm not gonna go over this selection process. You're wasting my time. You don't know who I am. And I'm thinking, I don't know who you are. That's right, <laughs> that's why I want to do this. I don't know who you are. So, so I mean, he was, he was giving it to me for two or three minutes. You are making a mistake and this and that. And getting loud. But you remember, always stay calm and be, be assertive. So be quick to listen, slow to speak in a slow trainer. So I let him just talk and vent for two or three minutes, more like seven minutes. So finally I said, so, so, so I guess a point where you kind of cut. At this point, you throw your next move which I call the counterpunch. The counterpunch is a little bit more forceful, but still is very direct and very gentle. Let me show you what, what it is, and this is the way I responded to this, to this prospect. Hey, Mr. Prospect, I know you are very excited about this opportunity. I can hear the passion in your voice. Hey, I will be excited too. I know it's a great opportunity. You know, always keeping it very positive. I know you're excited and I can hear your passion, but you know what? We have this application and selection process to ensure that we select the best candidate. Would you do the same? And that our companies actually are good for each other. So, all our distributors have gone through this process. This is not personal. As a matter of fact, this company policy, you remember we talked about this? This is where it comes into play. Because when you say it is company policy, they back off in the sense that they, they think, oh, this guy cannot just change it for me. So, and gives it gives you more, more authority to say, I cannot, I cannot do anything. This company policy, everybody goes through it. Anyways. So we can start with the selection process today if you want, which is very simple. The first step is just form, just complete this formula. You know who you are. I didn't say that. Two things that two things can happen. The, the, can, the, prospect can, the prospect can say yes, let's, you know, let's do it, or can say no. If the, if the prospect says no, you end the conversation. Guess what this guy said? After he gave it to me for seven minutes, <laughs> I was not counting, but I remember, and he told me everything I was not gonna be able to do and how I was gonna miss it out, I told him this, and, he, and I told him, well, and let's go into the first Pro, or we can go into our selection process and the first step is, and he said, oh, okay, just like that. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I, my jaw dropped, I was, I was thinking, I had never had a Mr. Big Shot turning into a straight shooter. Suddenly the guy was okay with it. I'm thinking, maybe he didn't have a good breakfast, maybe he forgot his meds, I don't know what happened here, but okay. So, we, so actually we went over, you know, we went over the selection process, over the, the conversation. After that was very good. You know, sometimes this kind of bombastic and, and, and hard attitudes can be just a, a front and a first salvo just from the other person to see how you react. So 
The guy actually was really nice. He went through the entire selection process. He actually became a distributor. And he became, with months and, and, and a couple of years later, a very successful distributor. And he was always very nice. That's the value of using all the do's and don'ts, of keeping it keeping calm, of having a process, of sticking to it and not falling out under pressure. Two, three do's, three don'ts, two very simple maneuvers, and one really good result. Successful negotiations. So, let me finish with this. By preparing, by us helping our clients, by helping exporters, by ourselves if we're doing negotiations, by preparing, by working on the do's and don'ts, by putting it into practice through the two maneuvers that I just mentioned, exporters and ourselves can jump into the negotiations ring confident that we can succeed. And in no time, our exporters, ourselves, will be in our way to be negotiation champions. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And let us know what you thought about this episode. You can find us on Twitter. Our handle is at export like a boss. And you can use the hashtag export like a boss or the planet is your market. You can also contact us via email at podcast at export like a boss dot com. That's it for today. We have great guests scheduled for the next episodes. So stay tuned. See you in a couple of weeks. And remember, the planet is your market. Export like a boss. You've been listening to Export Like a Boss, the podcast for those on the front lines of international business and trade. For past episodes and more information, visit us at exportlikeaboss.com or subscribe on iTunes.